Hello everyone, and welcome to ECMATH. Today I'd like to talk to you about the even and odd symmetry tests, which is a recurring idea in Math 4. We see it a lot, kind of once or twice every unit, because every time we can learn about a new graph, we're going to be able to test it for its symmetry. There's two main kinds of symmetry that we can look for. There is y-axis reflectional symmetry, as displayed here on the left, uh, which is a reflection over the y-axis. And there's also what we call origin symmetry, uh, which is a 180 degree rotational symmetry about the origin. And although my graph is a sketch, it's not perfectly symmetric. You can imagine that if I picked up that red, red curve and spun it 180 degrees around that central blue point, it would look exactly the same. Or if you turned your computer upside down right now and you looked at the graph, it would appear exactly the same. So those are the two types of symmetry. We also call y-axis symmetry even symmetry, and we call origin symmetry odd symmetry. The way that we test for symmetry is by looking at the equation of the graph. So we, we're assuming that we don't know what the graph already looks like. If we knew what the graph looked like, we wouldn't need to be testing for symmetry, obviously. The symmetry tests always start the same way. We'll be given f of x, and the first thing we're going to compute is f of minus x. And so when we compute this, we're, what we're doing is we're substituting negative x in everywhere that we would see an x in the original equation. And we have to do it every single place. So let me do that. This would be parentheses minus x to the fourth minus 2 parentheses minus x squared minus 1. And a pattern you'll start to notice is that whenever you have a minus x to an even power, the negative, right, this is really minus x times minus x times minus x times minus x times minus x. Well, four negatives multiplied together makes a positive, so this would really just be x to the fourth. And then I would have minus 2. The minus 2 doesn't change. And then negative x squared becomes x squared minus 1. And that's equal to f of negative x. And then, having done that algebra, we're going to look at an observation. We're going to, or we're going to make an observation. We're going to compare f of x to our f of negative x and look at what has changed. In this case, I have x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 1. So there has been no change. In this case, no change. And what we will write then is that f of x is just exactly equal to f of minus x. Now we said before that this was a symmetry test. So let's talk about what type of symmetry this algebraic relationship describes. So here on the screen now is the graph of the equation we just tested, x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 1. And when we tested it, we proved that for that equation, f of x was equal to f of minus x. So what that means is on this graph, if I were to choose any x, like for example, x equals 1, I would notice that f of 1 from the graph is equal to negative 2. But I look at negative 1, I would also observe that f of negative 1 is also equal to negative 2. And that's an, an algebraic example of saying, oh, f of x is always equal to f of minus x. But just testing this with a couple numerical examples is not enough. Uh, this would be true no matter what x I chose. So I'm going to pick, if I pick a random x uh, right in between 0 and 1, why don't we zoom in a lot? I'll pick a random x right in between 0 and 1. And oh, I'm going to pick an x to the left because x doesn't have to be to the right all the time. That's my x. And then if I go down the graph, I will observe that on the y-axis, that value would be f of x. Well, if x is right here, its opposite would be on the other side of the axis. That's opposite x, and it's okay that opposite x is on the positive side and x was on the negative side. It just means that x was originally a negative number. Travel down towards the function. Look at where we meet. 
at least close enough for a sketch, and I notice that even for our randomly chosen x, f of x was equal to f of its opposite, f of minus x. So what have we shown? Well, what type of symmetries does this describe? Well, it's the symmetry where everything on the left side, that's the right side, that's okay. Everything on the right side is mirrored on the left side. So this is, when you have the property f of x is equal to f of minus x, this is that even symmetry that we described before. Uh, or we would say y-axis reflection. Reflectional symmetry. And we can draw our line of symmetry directly down the y-axis. And you can indeed see that this graph is mirrored exactly on the left and right. But the best way to prove that is not even to look at the graph. The way to prove that that symmetry exists is to show what we showed here with the equations, that, that algebraically, for all x, f of x is equal to f of minus x. And if you show that, then you will know that when you start to draw the graph, the graph will have that symmetry. Right? To this day, I had the computer to help me make the graph, but if I was making this graph by hand, and I knew that there was going to be symmetry, then I would really only have to draw half of it, and I could just mirror the other half. So knowing about the symmetry is a really good graphing tool. Um, and I guess I wanted to just state the test one more time. So the test for even y-axis reflectional symmetry is, is f of x equal to f of opposite x. And uh, we'll say for all x. That's the test. So you check that algebraically by substituting opposite x in. And if that equation holds true after you substitute opposite x in, then you will have this y-axis reflectional symmetry. Um, one other note is that graphs can have symmetry. In fact, every parabola has a line of symmetry. Right, right, this parabola over here in the first quadrant definitely has a line of symmetry. We wouldn't say it's not a, a it's an asymmetric graph or anything, but this is not a graph with even symmetry. That is specifically the even symmetry tests tests is it reflection reflectable over the y-axis only. So that's something to watch out for. Let's consider another type of equation. Uh, so we're going to look at f of x equals x cubed minus x. And just like before, every symmetry test starts the same way. We're given f of x. We're going to compute f of minus x and see what happens. So here it would be minus x to the third minus minus x. Now let's see if we can do some algebra. Minus x to the third is like minus x times minus x times minus x. So that's three negatives. So this is going to be a negative result. It's going to be negative x to the third and then double negative here plus x. And I'm even going to go, you could probably stop here, but I'm going to go one more step and make uh pull that negative off the front and notice that this is negative x cubed minus x uh, and that would be f of minus x and so now i want we're going to observe again we're going to look at the result and compare the equations the original equation was x cubed minus x and the equation with opposite x is either negative x cubed plus x or negative of x cubed minus x. And in that second form really reveals what's going on. We would say in this relationship that f of x was equal to the opposite of f of minus x. That is, when I plugged in negative x, I got something that was the complete opposite. 
Or I could say uh, one way that people like to look at it is we notice that all comparing uh, those two forms, all terms change sign. So this is another type of symmetry relationship because it's not exactly the same, but something predictable did happen. Let's look at the graph of this equation. This is a neat, neat little graph. So the relationship that held true, oh, here's the graph, was that f of x was equal to the opposite of the opposite, f of minus x. And here was the graph. And so you can see from the graph that this is going to be a graph of origin symmetry. Which again, origin symmetry is kind of a vague term. What origin symmetry means is that if you put a push pin right at the origin and then rotated the graph 180 degrees, you would see the same graph. That's what origin symmetry means. So I'll even add 180 degrees rotational just as a reminder of what type of symmetry I'm looking at. Now why does this equation cause that type of symmetry, this rotational symmetry? Well, let's see, I'm going to write the equation, the relation. So I had f of x is equal to opposite of f of opposite x. So say I had a randomly chosen x, I'll pick an x between 1 and 2. Here's x, and up here is f of x. Now let's see. The reflection of that would be opposite x over here, and what I notice is that where from x I went up to f of x, from opposite x I have to go down to find f of minus x but I went up and down the same amount, that these were like congruent segments. So it's not that those are, are equal in direction or everything, but they are equal in length. So uh, f of minus x is equal and opposite to f of x. By the way, uh, I wrote this sort of backwards here. Often in the book you'll see this test written as f of x is equal to opposite f of opposite x. I actually think it makes almost more sense to write it like this. Opposite of f of x is equal to f of opposite x. And those are equivalent because you're just like dividing by minus 1 you're, or multiplying by minus 1. So those are equivalent statements. Um, and just in, for another example with a specific number, um, well, I'm going to look at these min minima and maxima points, right? So here is like, I'll call this an x1. So then down here would be f of x1. Well, this is symmetric. So this is the opposite of x1. And this f value would be f of opposite x1. And what I notice, again, is that these green segments, the, the y-coordinate of these points, are equal and opposite. So with these points as well, it, it is, seems true that f of x1 is equal to the opposite of f of opposite x1. So whenever we write like opposite x1, we just mean the, the reflection of it. Uh, and so that is why when you have a graph that has this relationship, it causes origin symmetry. And I want to state that one more time uh, just in words. The test for origin symmetry. If f of x is equal to the opposite of f of opposite x, or we can re rearrange this equation, opposite of f of x is equal to f of opposite x, right? However you want to write it, then the graph has origin symmetry. And I will add for all x. So one thing students try to do sometimes, not always, is they test this relationship for specific numbers. They say, okay, f of 1 is equal to f of minus 1. 
But the thing is, is that I can, I'm pretty sneaky and I can create a graph where for all of the numbers that you might test, a certain relationship holds true. But for, for example, a fraction or a number that you wouldn't think to test, the relationship does not hold true. And I could easily create that graph and sneak that into you. So when you do this test, you really are testing it algebraically. You have to test with the equation. You can't just test for a specific x. Um, now let's do just another example. So the rest of the video is mostly going to be examples. You should definitely stick around for this example because it is important. So this is how you might see it written in a book. Here's a function, test for symmetry. The first thing that you have to know to do is that when you're testing for symmetry, we're going to compute f of opposite x. And I have this set up just right underneath here. So f of opposite x will be opposite x to the third minus opposite x plus 1. And then we'll do a little distributing. So that'll be opposite, right? Negative to the third is still negative, so that's negative x to the third plus x plus 1. And then what you do is compare to f of x. So I'm going to compare this equation and this equation. And what I'm going to notice, or what I notice here, is that um, they're not the same. And so they're not the same, which means this is not even symmetry. But I also notice that they're not complete opposites. That is, I have one sign, this sign changed. Oh, this is going to be hard. That sign changed. The sign on the x changed. But the sign on the 1 stayed the same. So I did not have everything change sign. So they're not the same, and which means they're not even. And they're not complete opposites, which means this is not odd. So this is an example where f of x, based on this test, is neither even nor odd. We don't say it has no symmetry because that's a little misleading. The graph, which I'm about to show you, does have some symmetries, but it does not have even symmetry, nor does it have odd symmetry. Um, so here we have, for example, I guess algebraically, f of x was not equal to f of minus x, and it was also not equal to the negative of minus x. That's what it means to be neither even nor odd. Here's the graph of this. It's actually the graph from the last problem shifted up by 1, right? All I did was add 1, and so you'll recognize the graph. It appears to have sort of rotational symmetry still. It's the same shape, but it no longer has that rotational symmetry around the origin, right? Odd symmetry is rotational around the origin, and it also definitely does not have even mirror symmetry if I were to try to mirror it across the y-axis. So that's another example, or this is our first example, of a graph that's neither even nor odd. At this point in the video, I would say that I have covered all of the all of what you need to know about even and odd symmetry. So if you are feeling really confident, this might be a good time to pause the video and go try some homework problems. If you're not feeling so confident yet in being able to do these tests on your own, then I have a couple more examples that I'm going to work through, and we'll just let this run as long as it takes to get through those examples. So without further ado, let's look at example four. Oh, I don't want to show you that graph yet. All right, so I have x to the fourth plus x minus three, and we're gonna test this for symmetry. So when I test for symmetry, the first thing I wanna check is f of opposite x. Let's see what I get. So this will be opposite x to the fourth plus opposite x minus three. I'm gonna simplify this. So this will be positive x to the fourth minus x minus three. Now I'm going to look and compare f of x and compare it to f of minus x. 
Let's see what's changed. Okay, I notice no change in the x to the fourth term, no change in the three term, but the original had plus x and f of minus x has an opposite x or a negative x. So this is another situation where some things changed sign and other things did not. And so this is another situation where the graph will be neither even nor odd in terms of symmetry. So it's a pretty, once you're used to it, this is a really quick test. Um, by the way, here's another thing that you can think about and why I kind of chose this example, which is you will start to notice that when you do these tests, even powers will always stay the same and odd powers of x, like x to the one, will always change. So if you see at the start something with a mix of even powers of x and odd powers of x, and in this case a constant kind of counts as an even power of x because it will always stay the same, you can tell that it's, it's going to be one of these neither even nor odd. So it's going to be an odd symmetry, you have to have all odd powers. If it's going to be an even symmetry, you're going to have to have all even powers. With uh, Specifically, that's for polynomials. All kinds of graphs, even like whether or not they have powers, can have these symmetry relationships. Um, but this was one where, at least in these nice polynomials, you can kind of look at the exponents and tell right away what type of symmetries you'll have. Uh, let's see, what do we have? Oh, this was the graph of this equation. Uh, I had to squish it a little bit to fit it on the page, but it's a almost parabola. The x fourth gives it that kind of parabolish shape, but the plus x minus three causes it to be skewed a little bit down. And so that you can see from the graph that it is no longer y-axis reflectional because the that um, local minimum has been moved around a little bit. Next example. And now things are going to really start to get interesting because, like I said, you can do even an odd test with all kinds of functions that you have no idea what the graph looks like. When you look at this at, some, at this point in your math career, you're probably going like, what in the world would this graph be? And so understanding the symmetry actually helps you construct the graph. And I will show you the graph, but only after we've tested for symmetry. Um, one thing I might do here is write this uh, in multiplied out form. So usually we like this for graphing in this um, factored form, but I would multiply this out. This is a difference of squares, so it's going to be x squared minus 9. Uh, the middle terms cancel out. Be sure you don't do something bogus and cancel the 9s or anything. Remember this is like in parentheses, so you can't cancel things out. All right, so then I'm going to check f of minus x. And that will be uh, 9, I'm going to write it right, under, right underneath, f of minus x will be 9 over minus x squared minus 9, which would reduce to 9 over x squared minus 9. And what I notice is that f of x and f of minus x are exactly equal to each other. We have 9 over x squared minus 9 in both cases. So this graph, whatever it is, should have that even symmetry. Are you ready to see the graph? Well, here, well, before we show you the graph, let's think about what it might have. We'll notice that we have some excluded values that these would say that x should never, never equal 3 or minus 3. So the graph that you're going to see is going to be trying to kind of be a normal graph, but bend out of the way from being undefined at those values. And that causes it to have this shape right here. So this is 9 over x squared minus 9, the, in purple at least. The dotted lines are what we call vertical asymptotes. That represents the undefined values at negative 3 and positive 3. 
And what you can tell is even though this is a, a totally bizarre graph, it does indeed have that beautiful mirror y-axis even symmetry that the reflection of the graph from left to right is identical. And so knowing that symmetry can really help you create the graph. Example six, I'm gonna take the same graph and change just one thing, which is I put an X on the top instead of a, a nine. So now if I look at this graph, uh, I wanna test F of minus X. I, uh, I'll simplify the original graph first. So this is gonna be X over x squared minus nine. And again, these are grouped together, so you can't like simplify or cross out that x. It doesn't work that way. You just have to leave it kind of like this. f of minus x would then give me minus x now on the top over, what do I do? It would give me minus x on the top over minus x squared minus nine, which I could simplify to minus x over x squared minus 9. And now if I compare these two, I notice that f of x and f of minus x are not the same, but they are exactly opposites of each other. They're opposites of each other because we now have a negative in front. Uh, so it is true in this case that f of x is, is the opposite of f of minus x. So this would be a graph with odd symmetry. And even though, again, you have no idea how to graph this, you can now, when you see the graph, hopefully be not surprised that it has rotational symmetry about the origin. So this equation right here is x over x squared minus 9. It still has those vertical asymptotes at negative 3 and positive 3 because of where it would be undefined, but it also now has a 0 at 0 from the x on top, and you can observe that if I were to take this graph and rotate it 180 degrees, including, by the way, these outer pieces, right, the outer pieces would swing all the way around from the first to the third quadrant, you would get the same graph or you'd have the same picture. So this is another example of an odd symmetry graph that's kind of a strange relationship that you don't actually know what the graph should look like yet. But once you see it, you're not surprised. These last two examples uh, are going to be about trig functions, and they're actually a little bit backwards. Because once we start to understand symmetry tests, if we already know the graph, it can tell us things about the algebra of equations. Um, and so let's think about the graph of y equals sine of x. y equals sine of x, if you'll recall, is a wave that goes from 0 to 360 degrees. We'll be in degrees today. And it also travels backwards. It travels like this, so it travels up, down, and then back to where it started, a full rotation of a circle, and if you go backwards to negative 360 degrees, it would travel like this. And you might observe that this graph sure looks like those graphs that had odd symmetry. So, odd symmetry, the equation, says that f of x is equal to opposite f of opposite x, or alternately that opposite f of x is equal to f of opposite x, right? however you want to phrase it. So what, based on that, could we say of these two statements down here is true about sine x? Statement A or statement B it actually seems like, based on odd symmetry, that statement B is true. That sine of x is equal to the opposite of sine of opposite x. And this statement is actually false. That's false. Don't write that down. 
You'll see this a lot in trig. If we'll be simplifying something with sine and we go, all right, we have sine of negative three. That's actually by this equation equal to the opposite of the sine of three. And of course, sometimes one or the other of those is much easier to compute. But that's true because the graph of sine we know has this odd symmetry. So we can start to use that symmetry in equations. And let's play the same game, but with cosine for our kind of last example. So thinking about the graph of cosine, it is also a wave. It also goes from zero to 360 degrees. But cosine starts at its maximum. Now, what do I need to do? Let me hit the minimum right here. Starts at its maximum, travels to its minimum, and returns to its maximum. Easier to draw that direction. And if you think about the graph of cosine, what type of symmetry does it have? Well, it looks like a mustache. So the graph of cosine must have even symmetry, which means that f of opposite x is always equal to f of x. And if I was to make that statement then about cosine and try to decide which of these two would be true, this first statement would be always true for cosine. The second statement would be false. And I could use this while doing algebraic calculations. Say that a, a test asks me to compute the cosine of negative 310 degrees, and I just didn't feel like drawing negative angles today. I could say, you know what? I know because of the even identity that this would be equal to the cosine of positive 310 degrees because cosine is even. So that's just another use of these symmetry tests is helping us in calculations when we already know the graph, but we're trying to do, to do other things. Um, these two statements about sine and cosine, which are completely true, actually have a name. Uh, we're going to learn this in chapter five, and you're going to have to memorize them. They're the even and odd identities for sine and cosine. So there's nothing magical about them. You just learn them uh, six months ahead of where you're supposed to. Cool. Congratulations. The two, there are the two identities, sine of minus x is equal to minus sine of x, and cosine of minus x is equal to cosine of, my, of, of x. And there is actually one for tangent. We won't talk about it too lot, but it is true that tangent is an odd function as well. Uh, just, you know, if you're interested. And you can check out the graph of tangent if you would like. You've been watching ECMATH. This has been Even and Odd Symmetry Tests. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know what questions you have. And if you have no further questions, go do your homework, and I'll see everyone next time.